Hello, lovely listeners. We're your boyfriend twins. We're the same, but different. Also, we're not actually boyfriends. Yeah, and we're not related. We just are two friends who started an audio podcast where the entire shtick is <laughs> that it relies on people seeing our face. Again, I need you to stop <laughs> using the word friends so liberally. We're coworkers. And I need you to stop recycling jokes. Listen, Taha, I know that the planet is on fire, but I don't think you need to be recycling this aggressively. Oh! oh that was sick! <laughs> that was fucking sick. I like that. Thank you um, so much. Taha, hello. It's great to talk to hi. you again. How was your week? If you could describe your week in a sex position, what would it be like? Oh, oh my god. This past week was eventful. So two big things happened. One okay. was my friend needed an extra in her music video, so I got to play a straight man at a strip club, um, hey. which was really fun. Fun. Really and another on your one was shops there, huh? Oh, it was great. I was so <laughs> so believable, Kevin. Really strong acting chops. Like as some of you who may be longtime followers of my career may know, I was in my twelfth grade production of Suze Golden Musical. So um Yes, Kevin, the joke was that career was in quotation marks already. So you emphasizing <laughs> it to do the same thing doesn't make it funnier. Um, anyways. So, <laughs> oh my God, wait, that was actually a little more aggressive than I intended. Okay, I'm sorry. No, you can't take you. it back. We already said it and it's going to be in the edit, bitch. I don't care. I'll just dox you. Okay, so, um, <laughs> <laughs> so that was fun. And then... Um, I got a new accountant because my old accountant is so bad and I hung up on him and I got a new one. I basically, You're rich enough to have an accountant? Uh, <gasps> am I the I poorest a... one here? Hold on. Out of both of us, am I the poor? This is my first time having That's an accountant. That's not acceptable. In my defense. That's not acceptable. I'm older than you. That's unacceptable. You're barely older than me. That's, uh, did I stutter? I know I stutter a lot because of my dyslexia, but I did it. Did I do it that time? I did it just then, but did I do it before? I don't think so. <laughs> Whatever you say, sweetie. I am not comfortable with you making more money than me. That's what I meant to say. <laughs> okay, that's fine. Uh, um, yeah, well, it's my first time ever having an accountant. Congrats. Um, Good thank you. you. Yeah, it's helpful. Wait, why were they bad? But I'll see. How do you have a bad he, accountant? He was just incredibly unreliable. He was... Um. This uncle, he like basically, first of all, he went on vacation for like a long time. Okay, he did tell me over the phone, but like I forgot. So I texted him every day for weeks and he never responded. And I was like, are you huh. like put some sort of like message or something being like, I'm on vacation. Like I was panicking because there was a lot of time sensitive stuff. He like mentioned it once <laughs> in passing during a phone call. Next thing, one of his staff. So first of all, he's like, oh no, like I want you to actually come and do this in person. We'd been having a few sessions, sessions on the, <laughs> it sounds like some like phone sex thing. <laughs> And he was, we'd had a few calls over the phone and I was like, can we keep it virtual? And he's like, oh, I'd rather just once like to have my clients come in person. I was like, okay, fine. I'm going to be out of town in your city anyways. Uh -huh. So I went out of town to visit my family. And then I was like, okay, I'm going to get an Uber and go to the accountant because it's like nearby. And I call him. I'm like, hey, where's your office? Sorry, I'm just trying to find it. And he's like, oh, no one's in today. I'm like, what? Hmm. And I'm like, oh, like your staff booked this appointment for me. And he's like, oh, they made a mistake. That's not supposed to happen. He's like, maybe there was a miscommunication. And I'm like, I'm so diligent about my calendars. I'm like, maybe there's a chance that I put it in wrong, but I am so particular about meetings. Like I ask three times, like I look insane when I do it because I'm very like specific about it. And so I was very annoyed. And I was like, remembering all the times I was texting him and he wouldn't reply. And I was like, this on top of the fact that your staff are incompetent. And like, I literally did not come out of time for town for this. I was already in town. But I was a little heated. So I was like, I came out of town for this. <laughs> and he was like, oh, like, you know, maybe we can figure something out. And I was like, honestly, this man has been so bad at communicating. He's like really unreliable, like has a history of that. And so I, this is bad. I just hung up on him while he was talking. And then he tried calling me and I ignored his call. And he texted me being like, this mm -hmm. is like not appropriate. It's unacceptable. And then I waited like an hour or two. And I was like, it was inappropriate of me to hang up on you like that. Like, that's not okay. And I am really sorry. Like, that's not cool. So I did uh -huh. apologize. So I was like, okay, even though he's annoying, unreliable, um, poor communication, um, you know, lacks professionalism, struggles probably with boundaries, I assume. Um, is always late to meetings. He doesn't deserve to be hung up on like that. Like that's actually disrespectful to someone and like, that's not right. And it's out of character for me. So I, I very transparently apologized to him and told him I didn't want to keep working with him, but he didn't deserve to be spoken to that way. And what sex position would that be? Oh my God. I forgot what, <laughs> <laughs> I did not remember I was, like, recording a podcast or anything. I ever. have two thoughts. I have two thoughts. <laughs> okay. 
Sex position would be. I love doing a podcast okay, with you okay. because you just want a friend to talk to. You really just need <laughs> someone to, to talk I to have in so the many ether. Friends you just want to communicate. Oh, okay. I talk to my friends all the time. <laughs> sure. Stop. Don't be rude. I literally do. Um. Oh, what sex position would that be? That would be okay. Let's see deceit disappointment but also some acting and being straight at a strip club that sex position would be like honestly it sounds like you're a straight man in only fans i think my sex position would be a deceit, straight man disappointing yeah I'm thinking i'm thinking you're just like a straight person baiting gays into yes. subscribing to their only fans yes that's the sex yes that's actually really good that's exactly it and i'm like oh uh, i don't really know what they like this wiki how article said they like when i like put my legs up or something i don't know um <laughs> so that's my <laughs> sex position what what wiki article is telling you to put your legs up, hole? What? No, so I'm assuming that if you read a Wikipedia article, it'd be like, oh, put your legs up because that's like guys want to see your asshole. Because this one guy that I was talking to in New York, he was like, oh, Drake's leaked video was for a man because of the way he put his legs up. We need to stop. We need to stop right now because this is the third podcast in a row that you've mentioned Drake's floppy wang. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and we need to just address it because what is going on? The rest of the world has kind of moved on, Diva. So... <laughs> We is there something you want to say? Is there something we need to address? No, everything's fine. It seems like it's I'm I have no problem with just like halting the brakes and talking about Drake for a sec. There's nothing to say. It just keeps. I don't think that's true brain. because you keep saying things. No, I don't mean this to be an accusatory moment. I'm just saying I'm here to listen Pers and support you if you need to <laughs> get anything off your chest or onto it maybe from J. <laughs> From Drake's, I don't know why port keeps sword. coming up. No, you, I think we know why. I think we know exactly why. I didn't watch it that many times. I was curious, Kevin. What would your week be like if it was a sex position? Let's talk about something else. Mm, interesting deflection. If the if it okay, but be warned if it comes up one more time, I will stop literally everything to probe you, just like how you want Drake stick to do to your ass. Okay, wait. Oh, you made the joke before. Yes. I was going to tell you. I was like, Kevin, zing. I was zing. Gonna sext you. What's it called? Sexting with your voice. Dirty talk. I was going to dirty talk you. <laughs> <laughs> Sexting with your voice? You mean talking? <laughs> yeah. I was being like, oh yeah, Kevin, probe me. I was like, our followers really want me to say that. So maybe it'll be good for engagement. <laughs> Why are you wobbling around like Drake's penis? <laughs> Excellent. Oh, there it is. Oh, dear. There it is. Oh. You dumb idiot. I love it. I love it here. Thank you so much. Okay. So, Kevin, what would your week be if it was a sexual position? Currently, emotionally, right now, I feel very successful in my independence so i'm gonna say my sexual position is that i'm kicking everybody out and just getting the job done myself for forever i have looked mm. for a product for my hair that creates like this is about a product for your hair yeah diva it's a big deal i was me. getting this emotional and i was literally getting so emotional i was like oh like i know he's been through a lot these past few weeks and he's finally getting on his own two feet what do you mean this is about product in Who your says hair i'm getting emotional who says I have a, a, I emotions was. to deal with? Yeah, uh, yeah uh, thank. Okay, your your perception, bitch. That's your okay, that's your life Continue. story. Okay, so you're the product. how yeah. how how come I am both characterized as emotionless and a curmudgeon while also being someone who cannot control themselves and is hysterically oh, you sad because yourself. of their circumstance. No, I'm saying that you're. A victim of your life while experiencing no emotion. <laughs> it's like my mom said after I came out to her and she eventually pretended she was okay with it. I literally found her WhatsApp and she messaged her friend being like, my life is a bed of roses. And I was like, oh my God. Well, that's romantic. Does she mean like it's better no, now like, and a man loves me? Oh wait, not a bed of roses. Sorry. Maybe something about thorns. A bed of thorns? Roses. <laughs> <laughs> it was something bad about the fact that she has to deal with a gay son. And I was Yikes. like, speaking of rosing, do you know what rose budding is? There's a porn star who's really good at it. It scares me. Oh my God. It really does scare me. Okay. Oh, so me tell too. me about your hair product. Oh my God. I mean. <laughs> Whoa, just. <laughs> we're just doxing people. Oh, sorry. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> 
I find him very. I think he's a great point. I'm making really king hot. shame. No, 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 no. Oh, yes. way to backpedal. Yeah. Way to backpedal. This is all going up. It I'm scares keeping all me. Of this in. Hey, if you're into it, that's good. I'm saying it scares the shit out of me. Like <laughs> visuals scare me. Continue, continue, please continue. I'm not here to king shame. Anyway, uh, so my hair, <laughs> my hair is okay. My scalp is very oily, and so there's a lot of like stuff that that gets up in there however there's a lot of body to my hair as well right so it poofs so the scalp is clean but the hair is like out so i've always looked for an oil that i can put back into my hair that like creates that like after two days kind of natural weight without having to just wait two days and so i think i found something that works i've been putting rose hip oil into my hair nice. and i washed it this nice. morning and it's already like kind of like shiny and fine and it looks good okay. literally after every haircut that i get i bring this up to the fucking person the the stylist if you will and it's i'm like what can i do what can i do to have uh, you know to, to put this this oil back into my my hair so i can look like i didn't just wash it and it's just helmet hair all day I, my hair doesn't look like a fucking penis and i <laughs> don't laugh at that this is my experience don't laugh <laughs> how dare you <laughs> and every time they suggest something <laughs> shitty and something that doesn't work or some kind of like putty that just like styles it and doesn't actually let it sit so yeah, i did fine. it myself and i've had wild success so don't listen how to professionals often... just try your own thing <laughs> Tough you, but anal. Um, that was a weird joke. How often do you wash your hair with shampoo? Like four every four to five days. Okay, good. Um, I was, you know what's so funny? Literally, I was thinking when you got on camera, I was like, oh, Kevin's hair looks really nice. It's working. It's really good. Um, Thank you. Uh, yeah. What did, what do they say? Is it Maybelline? Is it? Oh is God, it? you're so like. What is the phrase, Kevin? It's literally so easy to remember. How do you not know this? Is it? Is it her? Is it Maybelline? Maybe it's me. What is it? <laughs> yeah. Maybe it's her. Maybe it's Maybelline. No, it's not. That's not it. It's not. What's the yes, phrase? Yes, it is. No, it's, it's not. Maybe, maybe it's, it's her. Maybe, maybe, it's maybe. No, it's not. Maybe it's her. No. Or Hold maybe on. it's. No, you're wrong. Maybe. Don't confidently push me out and shut me oh. down. Wow. What's the Maybelline slogan? Maybe she's born with it. Oh, oh my oh, God. Shit, I was wrong. Yeah, of course you were wrong. Is it her? No. You stupid bitch. We're both incorrect and you don't get to take credit for being better than me. Not this yeah, time. Fuck. <laughs> You're right. Damn it. Okay, yeah, whatever. I Maybe have completely her. forgot the joke I was trying to make by turning some kind of spin on the phrase. So hopefully that exchange was just funny enough as is. Do you know who Brad oh, Mondo oh, is? I mean, are we still talking about anal? No. Stuff it. We're talking about <laughs> barbers and stylists. <laughs> I, 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 he is gay, so I mean, maybe yeah, anal. Stuff but, it after know. I say anal. Um, that's not that's not helping your case at all. Fair. <laughs> okay, are we Listen, still talking you, about? Okay, so you're in love with rosehip oil? <laughs> no, we're not. You're in love with rosehip oil. Yeah, it you was supposed to love be for my week? skin, and then I put it in my hair instead. I say, wow. Hey, you, you could put it in other places. Let me know how it works. God. <laughs> okay, can I tell you something? I'm in love with this week. <laughs> Yeah, let's just let's honestly let's just move on past that. Absolutely. What Woo! else? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. What, what were you thinking this week? I'm in love with Dan Levy this week. Okay. Dan Levy has changed his hair, has a mustache now. I'm like very attracted to Dan Levy now. No, no, no. Let me show you. What, what are we? Dan Levy. Are we implying something? That Maybe we like people that look like us because they have mustaches. No, mm. Kevin, stop. Uh -oh. My friend. And she was uh -oh. like, all you do is have crushes on men that look like you, but in a different font. But that's not true because I don't uh -oh. have a crush on you. But Dan Levy doesn't look like me. Let me show you. No, no, no. Uh -oh. Please don't say that. Uh-oh. No, We're backpedaling this. again. This is just going to be a no. podcast of you backpedaling. Oh, damn it. Uh -oh. Does that look like us? Does in that the look video like cast, us? Taha just, just showed a picture oh. of himself. He doesn't look like us. No, actually, he doesn't. He's got a completely different face shape. But it is interesting that someone grew a mustache and you suddenly perked your eyebrows up. Oh, mustaches are sexy. You uh, think that's so? like, oh my god, mustaches are handsome, sexy, iconic, timeless, beautiful. When it's on the right face. <laughs> 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 mustaches are sexy with a thousand asterisks at the side <laughs> listen okay you know one hill i'll die on though 
I have a I'd theory love that hear. everyone in the world, you just like the idea of me dying. That's why you said that. Yeah, um, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> away from me on a hill. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, fuck you. I'll drag you down with me. Um, I think everyone in the world looks better with a nose ring. I'm glad There's you think no... that. I completely disagree. Again, your opinion matters not. You wear tank tops okay. to the club. I actually don't. You weren't listening to that whole story. Oh, I wore wait, a sweatshirt wait, wait. to the club. You know what, oh. actually? We'll get into... <laughs> <laughs> Ew! Ew! It's cold. It's winter. Actually, it's not. It's spring. But it's it was winter, <laughs> and it's still a little cold. Oh my god! What's yeah, wrong man, with a that's... sweater at the club? I'm not dancing. I'm standing around with my vodka Red Bull. It's it's gonna be okay. It will be, but like... Why did I say it like that? Vodka Red Bull? <laughs> what was the emphasis on the I just bowl assume for? that you have multiple speech impediments. A vodka Red Bull! <laughs> But yes, I think, Kevin, we should have a thruple with Dan Levy. We'll get him on our podcast, 100%. Get him on the podcast, 100 Dan, mm -hmm. listen, we know you're listening. We know you love. We know you Dan, follow I'm Canadian. Both of us. Exactly. That's where Shit's Creek it, it was. CBC? Is? It, it's on CBC, yes, I and it started only off on CBC. the first season. Regardless, Danny. Oh, Danny burn Boy, in I hell. Know. Burn oh, in hell. God. Jesus. Okay. That is the best show in the world. <laughs> I watched the a little bit of Lexus part. I saw the clips. I got the I Kevin, got the gist. Okay, we're moving past this because I don't want to do this right now. Okay, Dan, I'm so sorry. We I'll take care of you, sweetie. <coughs> <laughs> sorry, I was just I had to, I was grossed I out. Know. I get that out of my system. <laughs> I know. Old age. Um, just turned thirty one. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> He's turning into a, a, a an aging father as we speak. Okay, same. Okay, so no, I would not enter. Here's the thing. Okay, okay. Real quick, as a, like a quick segue from our segue, I yeah. do not want to be in a relationship with someone that looks like me, mostly because of insecurities that have developed from like watching ah. others make fun of others online for looking like their mm. romantic partner. Yes. So like, yes. would I want to be in a throuple with Dan Levy? Absolutely not because of said issues with my own brain, but I actually don't want to be in a throuple with anybody. Like I am yeah. not attracted to that idea. Sure. Period. Yeah, that's very fair. I vibe with you. What about that. you? I yeah, no, I'm the same. I think it's like I totally can understand why people are into that and like why maybe like for themselves and their heart and their relationship dynamics, that's something that could like enhance their life. I'm such a like this is gonna trigger so many white gays who like scream at you when you tell them that you're monogamous. I'm such a like monogamy, two people, my everything vibes with relationships, because that's what I like and what works with me. Um, and I've, I have a bunch of friends in like open relationships and non-monogamous um, kind of situations. And it's really great. And I'm so happy it works for them. Um, what's tough <laughs> or tricky is, have you ever had this experience? I'm curious, where somebody who is non-monogamous starts telling you about how monogamy isn't real and it's not we're not designed for monogamy and like tell you that your choices are wrong because you're monogamous or like tell you that it'll just be a matter of time like i don't know if that's is that something that's happened to you a lot because it happens to me a lot no it's not honestly everyone i know who's in a non-monogamous relationship tends to be chill about it however i have so few examples non-monogamous relationship lasting that i'm like it's hard to gauge it's hard to compare or even give it a fair analysis because it's like with something as complicated as a relationship it's like well did it yeah. not last because they weren't right for each other did it not last because of the yeah. lack of monogamy or did it not last I mean, because of some yeah. slut coming in and stealing the man in your defense you live in la i don't even think like monogamous relationships last long very there uh, no oh my god very no, long there from what bit. i've heard from what i've no. heard i don't know if this is the case but i actually disagree with you because you said that like you you prefer monogamy you 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 yes you crank that soldier boy uh, oh, superman that hoe and watch me uh, you crank that monogamy oh it doesn't work never mind you know what's? Did you know that 
Superman that hoe means to come on her back and stick the bed sheets onto her back with the cum and then have her walk around like she's wearing a cape like Superman. Are you joking? Not at all. Did you know that? That's incredible. I had no idea. Well, now you You're know. You're joking, right? See, this is an You're educational podcast that I'm You're not a little I'm liar. actually I'm actually for once in my life not pulling your chain, the truth. not trying to gaslight okay. you and not being a little bitch about things. I am dead serious. That is what that means. <laughs> so here's the thing about that though. I was having this conversation with someone that I hooked up with recently and I was like, "Oh, it's so interesting how our semen like is so different coagulated i just met him i thought it was fascinating because his was very actually that's a lot of information my point the conversations is that... that you have in private are very different than the conversations i have in private with people i thought it was fascinating i brought it up he agreed it's fine um he, it's just he agreed to because... shut me up but anyway <laughs> shut up no, he's like yeah no, coagulation okay. sure no, actually he wanted to see me again and i didn't so therefore i win that's not see that's so toxic keep that that's toxic we're gonna unpack that later um some semen it's is better okay than to make a joke. Others. It is okay to make a joke I that implies you are joking. an imperfect person. No, but I wasn't joking. I, that I said that I win because <laughs> I said that I win because I didn't want him and he. All right, me and I was <clears> I'll put joking. it on the board. We'll make a note and approach that later. We'll talk about that. Later. It's right Anyways, next to Drake's Kevin, pee pee. We got it on the board. Exactly. <laughs> Do you think, Kevin, that it depends on the semen for whether or not the cape could be stuck to someone's back? I'm gonna be completely real honest and forward with you i don't know enough about cum to answer that question at all depends on the semen some people's is very liquidy okay yeah 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 yeah. maybe i'll see that guy again and film him and send you and show you or something please don't um i don't <laughs> want that at all but if you want to do anything that you like then sure anyways <laughs> anyways um okay i think a big piece of non-monogamy is also like attention and care and love and like i think and i don't mean this derogatorily at all but i think like for a lot of people getting that like kind of validation or emotional fulfillment or even just yeah like i said attention from someone that they aren't getting from someone else feels like it's kind of filling in the gaps i'm gonna stop you right there because i want to just like i agree kind of okay i just want to really hammer in that like if you're in a relationship that you're enjoying and no one's getting hurt then who the fuck cares right like literally at the end of the day what does someone's judgment of your relationship matter if you like these people if you're having fun if you're yada yada yada. who cares how long it lasts who cares it does not matter that being said tell me that you don't have a goddamn favorite tell me that you don't have a favorite child Tell me yeah. that you don't have a favorite animal if you have more than one. Yeah. Tell me that you don't have a favorite boyfriend if there's two uh-huh. in your life. I oh. am too insecure. Like, this is it. Like, I, my judgment of someone's relationship is solely my own insecurities blasted on them. And it does not matter. That being said, I don't believe that you don't like one more than the other if there's a oh. couple. And I don't know how to unlearn this. And therefore, I don't think it'll ever not be in my brain as someone who wants to be in a relationship. I don't think I'll ever be mature enough to see a thruple and be like, equal, up triangles, the most strong shape that exists in nature. No, I'm going to look at that and be like, okay, but like, who do you spend more time with? Yeah, I don't know how to unlearn this. I don't know why that's immediately where my brain goes. I know it's probably because I'm insecure, but yeah. oh well. <laughs> Kevin, this is one of the things we share in common. I'm the same, and I know for a fact that so much of it is my own insecurity. Like I've talked to people in open. Yeah, you got a lot of like, that. You got a lot of those. I do. No, I yeah. really do. And I'm not even joking. Like, genuinely, I can be quite insecure in relationships. And I've told my friends that are in open relationships. I'm like, can you tell me more about that? Like, if someone even looks at my boyfriend, I fantasize about throwing them into acid. And I'm like, get your disgusting eyes off of my man. And I'm like, I, I'm insecure. It's bad. And I'm also like, there has oh, to be Oh, you don't a have favorite. to say it twice. This Everyone all, listening. Shut up. Shut up. Shut up. Shut up. Um, and like, again, same disclaimer as you were. I'm like, I like my thing is like everyone should be allowed to do what they want without like being shat on for it. <laughs> yeah, of course. Um, if like I'm just inquisitive <sighs> and curious, scoop it up, 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 that's that scat plate. Remember, <laughs> throw back. Um, <laughs> my grandmother used to say this thing to my mom. My mom would be like, <laughs> my mom would be like, um, mom, which one of your kids do you like more? I feel like you like you know my sister more than you like me. My grandmother would say, how can I like one kid more than the other? Each kid is like a finger on my hand, but there's always one finger that you just need more and that's your sister. Yeah, 100%. 
That grandma knows where it's and at. And I'm like, there you go. Grandma was not lying. No. Grandma was not like, there's a favorite. And my friend, she was actually talking about this. She's like, um, she's like kind of seeing this really hot poly guy. And she's like, how does he rank us? Like, and he was like, he's dating this one girl who's kind of ugly, but she can do the splits. Does that put her above me in the leaderboard or below? And she's like, I'm funny. I'm, I'm a comedian. Is that valued more than my physical capability? And I'm like, nope. Girl, that's You're a comedian, so true. Dead to us. No. Bad. <laughs> no. Oh, sorry, sorry. Kevin, was... you don't. Okay. Hold up. <laughs> funny kidding. people are so attractive. You don't find. Okay. Wait, do you not find it really sexy when a guy's funny? I do. But there's two different versions of funny here. If someone can make me laugh, that's very attractive. If someone comes up to me and says, hi, I do stand-up comedy. I say, yeah, 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 yeah. see, uh, yeah. oh, yeah, do you yeah, want yeah, me to come yeah. to your improv show too? Oh, no, thank you. It is literally the exact same as, and I can say this because I'm one of these people. I have a new podcast I just started with my friend. You should oh, listen. Yeah. It's about two people talking about relationships. That's yeah. a red flag. <laughs> uh-huh. I know, particularly two men. Yeah. Oh gosh. In 2024, yeah. I don't think so. I, I don't know. Think so. I was I like, wouldn't listen. Li- <laughs> Anyone who's listening to a new podcast in 2024 <laughs> by two men, gross. And we're aware of the fact that we're talking about ourselves. By the way, this is not lost on us. I it's not it's lost on us. Obvious. Yeah. I think it was very obvious, but no, you but know. Thank you so anyway. much for listening. Please like and subscribe, and also leave a five star yeah. rating. Anyway, back to support our support people of color. It's really. <laughs> uh yes oh we shouldn't support people of color i i know i don't have a color but i'd be pulling it right now if i did Kevin, <laughs> hey i'm a racialized person and i don't have a color look at me hey, look, look at, at me go look at my you. friends will be like melanin check and i'm like i don't have any I look like a corpse. <laughs> melanin check <laughs> um the light skin privilege is great though it's great i'm like a double agent people yeah. forget that i'm ethnic sometimes and like say out of pocket racist things in front of me and i'm like oh you're stupid <laughs> or like when pakistani or indian auntie starts speaking in my language in front of me to their families and i'm like i i speak this language fluently and i know what you're saying i was in an uber once and i started speaking to the auntie in my language because she didn't <gasps> understand english and she literally went ah and I was like, what? <laughs> and I was like, my name's Taha. Why did you think I wouldn't speak Urdu? And she was like, why are people like using our names as exotic names for their kids? So I thought it was one of those. So like, yeah, it's go. like trying a um, new meal at a restaurant. It's quirky. Yes. Oh my God. A hundred percent. And if you had to try a new <laughs> that's stupid. Never mind. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Obviously. <laughs> wait, 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 okay. Obviously- because we were on something with the thruples. We disagree on monogamy. Because I yeah. think that I can't fathom myself having a relationship exist without some kind of like ebbs and flow to openness. Like whether it's like, you know what, let's take a break from each other for a month, run around Europe and fuck off and then come back and return to that monogamy. Like I, I can imagine that being something that works for many different mm. people. But like I don't yeah. really see just monogamy being something that feels fulfilling for your entire you. life for me personally. Yeah. Cool. So we disagree on the monogamy stance. However, sure. like what would a thruple need for you to say yes, like this is what I this is what I can do. I can I can If one of them this. was like if one of them literally was like in two calendar years, I will kill myself. And that way I'll know that I'll be in a monogamous relationship after and I'll have like tried it. God. If one of us is eliminated, <laughs> we fight and in two years in our thruple, we fight to the death and the last two remaining get married. <laughs> I'm insane. Bum, 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 I would see bum, the other person bum, touching bum, my man bum, and I'd bum, be bum, like, bum. <laughs> they're touching my man. Oh my God. But it's okay. They're going to die in. I have a little count, like count thing on my phone. That's the okny okay. way to do it. I'm sorry. Alrighty. Stay so away from no my man. I'm insane. For you. Yeah. Okay. Okay. I'm not that well. Is... <laughs> I'm not why, well. Why are you so inclined to be so threatened by someone else approaching your man? I am insecure. I'm not joking. I like. So it's this been, is interesting. This is my interesting. Last... I'm the original Jolene song written by Dolly Parton and you're the Beyonce version correct because I'm over here being like I'm not good enough to hold this thing down you need to please please just give me just give, please don't his standards are already so low for me please don't don't stay away please and you're over here being like I've got my clock and I'm ready to I fight I yeah. mean don't blink towards my man really no I I'm obviously exaggerating for humor's sake, but there is a lot of insecurity, like in relationships that I've worked through. First relationship was really hard. Second relationships, I was fucking relationship. Sorry, I was amazing at the insecurity thing. Wait, 
I was secure. <laughs> That's what I meant to say. Um, <laughs> I was framed you, really you well. You can't even believe how many insecurities I had. It was amazing. <laughs> no. Yeah. So you know how he, you know how he framed it? He was like, um, I don't want us to like get angry or jealous if a guy's into us. He's like, the way I would want it to be is like, if I know someone's hitting on you is in, is into you and you're being respectful, like not cheating on me or whatever. It's like, oh yeah, like my man's hot and people want to hit on him. That kind of That's reframing how I actually see it really helped me. No, when people yeah. used to flirt and do things with my ex, I was like, yeah, mm, right? Uh, yeah. But I don't think everyone sees it that way. It's tough too, right? Because you, it's, it's all learned behaviors. Like something I really had to unlearn in my first relationships that a lot of brown people do, like South Asian people especially. Um, we're taught that possessiveness is actually romantic mm -hmm. in movies family values, et cetera. And it's not even just a South Asian thing. Actually, I know it's really common in a lot of relationships everywhere. It's like, oh no, like it's so romantic that I'm yours and you're mine and I own you. And like that kind of yeah. idea that you own this person is like, it's so toxic and I had to unlearn some of, uh, so much of it. Obviously I was leaning into it as a joke earlier when we were talking yeah. about the insecurity parts, but like it is very real and it like there's some real fucked up toxic relationships where people really well, that's the thing i don't think it has to be toxic but i think the way we approach oh. ownership it is toxic you know because it's like it's it's all fun and games when you like you know <laughs> quote unquote own a person until we look at the history of owning a person in you know the globe so it's like yeah. it's all yeah. like i think the people who find that romantic are the people who really haven't maybe dissected what that means and usually yes, it's the I, man who it's like what you aren't yeah. complimented by me doing everything it's like yeah i'm my own person so yeah there is a there is an aspect of this where you're just taking the reins and not letting me speak and also not even just not letting you speak in terms of taking up space like that i'm talking about possessiveness like oh no he shouldn't even like talk to other guys like that's my man like as a man why are you doing that like that's toxic you know what i mean like, yeah like i always that. have seen that as a little bit of a red flag it's just like you can't you, like first of all it's like do you not trust me enough to talk yeah. to a man uh yeah. but also it's like are you so bad at your job as a partner that if I talk to another man, you might be threatened by that. I do. I just see it as like a, a rubber band back to the man where it's like, why are you so lame that if an interaction threatens you, then it's like, uh oh, maybe we need to do better at our own job. Yeah, <laughs> like, should it, shouldn't you be in a position where your woman or any partner can go around being like, yeah, he did this for me. You're a amazing? woman? And then everyone. Am agrees. I talking to a Southern a uh, Republican? Where that's how I imagine it. Does what that's, a, that's how I imagine it. I imagine it like, uh, I imagine like white Southern Republicans that go around being like, I don't want my woman talking to no man. Cause if I, if I see her talking, then that means she's flirting. And I'm just like, okay. <laughs> Alrighty. That's how I imagine I assure that. you it's, it's a lot of city people as well. And it, it was me well, before. No, I've been I listening to it. enough Cowboy Carter. I think I understand the South at this point. So I'm pretty secure in my Very judgment. Fair. Yeah. Okay. Well, <laughs> we'll give that to you. I'm, I'm saying it's also prevalent in cities. If you listen to my 100%. Cowboy Carter Thaha's version on my unreleased EP. <laughs> <laughs> Your your Jolene is just about sitting on the subway looking for a date anywhere you can find yeah. it. <laughs> and like going to the CN Tower, um, yes. and finding. Okay, nothing. apparently, apparently, there's a TV show called Couple to Thruple where they like have couples and they like try to introduce a third person. I like. I find that premise very interesting because we were talking about like, what are the conditions for you to be okay with a thruple? That's something probably these couples are probably thinking about really actively. I know, Kevin, you asked me, you were like, is there something that would make you be okay with a thruple? Mm -hmm. thruple? I said, yes, that person dying. What would be something that makes you be like, okay, we can do a thruple? Distance. So like, I've thought about this because I've, I've actually, whenever I'm like, uh-oh, alarm bells are going off in my brain and you're feeling really like threatened by this why i yeah. think about it a lot so like i think what would make a thruple work for me is if someone was like out of town all the time so that there would be just this natural point where like we shared each other and so it's been like yes yeah, sometimes we're all together sometimes one person's here sometimes the other so then i think naturally i could just blame scheduling on how things shake out instead of the like emotional response and ways i perceive people gravitating toward each other i think that yeah. would be something i'm like well 
you can't do it. I was thinking about this the other day where I am opposed to a lot of sexual kinks. However, I'm wondering if my opposition comes from this mindset of thinking that wanting a kink is tacky. If I was like, quote unquote, forced into something, i.e. like handcuffed to a bed or something where I'm like not able to really control all the circumstances, then I could blame the lack of control on the kink experience and be able to like not be responsible for thinking i like it but instead just letting someone take over okay wait let me make sure i understand you you're like okay okay let me summarize this came this thought came from our romance conversation where i was like why do i hate romance and i think it's because i think about hating romance and i think it's tacky. Therefore, if I am put in a romantic situation ah. or some kind of kink situation where I don't have yeah. as much control over the decisions, then I can just be like, well, it's up to them. And You I like the it. experience of it, just not the perception of it. Yeah, like no one's allowed to break in and enter me, but... Yeah, I'm, I'm a little handcuffed here, maybe. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like when you're at a party and you're like, oh my god, like... Guys, stop. Stop daring me to eat all the ice cream. No, guys, stop. Yeah, oh, my no God. Don't make me sing. Don't make me sing. Exactly oh my God. that. Don't handcuff me this bed. Oh, my God. Don't handcuff me this bed. And you know what song, you know what oh song you'd sing, Kevin? This is a throwback to episode one. Every single day. Oh, <laughs> God. Oh, my Boys, God. Girls, I can't see, help it, see, this, is the, this is the can of worms that we've opened up to the point where I'm afraid of hating myself. And so we, are, we aren't going to go there until I've no. had many more months of therapy <laughs> i do we... love that our podcast has lore and as you Oof. go through your months of therapy we'll have even more lore built up and so you'll be more ready to tackle it i do want to quickly say um for me to be in a throuple my actual condition wouldn't be the person signing a contract where they kill themselves what would actually need to happen is i really hope so work. i really hope that wasn't yes. the joke I did want to answer it honestly, which is just I would want to develop a really deep friendship and trust and bond with the other two individually. So yeah, I could like, be their it, friend and like really spend time trusting them mm -hmm. and like having my own really deep relationship with them. That way I wouldn't be scared of like, you like this person more or this person more. I'm like, no, like I like both of them and we're all like, blah, 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 blah. Um, I mean, I think that's wait. exactly what a healthy throuple is. Just yeah. mutual respect and trust. Yeah. As I was saying that, I was like, I think that is what a lot of throuples or people in non-monogamous relationships say is what makes it work, which is really cool. Yeah, that's what they say. You know what's say. also interesting? Well, liars well, your words but, your words yeah well your, your words, words were any people of color so <gasps> you know what's really no. that was <gasps> one time no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> well i'm times. sorry the street meat gave me food poisoning i'm not gonna apologize <laughs> <I'm> just kidding <laughs> i'm upset you know what why does street meat smell better than half the fucking restaurants that are available these days. How come I can walk past seven taco shops in my town and shut all up. of them? No, shut up, shut up, shut up, no. You can't move past moved my up. joke? Oh, God. Street meat? You refer to ethnics as street meat? <laughs> no, cooking street meat. No, but you were no, like... The, no, no, okay. If we're Wait, gonna you were like... Hold up, hold up, hold up. No, 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 no. Before no, 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 I, before no, no, I, I said, explain, you before said, I explain how no, it's not... No, 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 This is a joke I do not stand by. No, no, no. This is a joke I do not stand by, and I will say that... Ethnics are not the street meat. Ethnics are cooking the street meat. In this in this problematic joke that I do not stand by. Okay. Thank I you. I still don't get how that's better, but I don't understand. <laughs> um. It's a little better. <laughs> to the people listening, it's a little better. It's not a joke I stand by. We will not be putting this on Twitter. No. no. <laughs> My people want to see your Twitter that... for other reasons, Kevin. <laughs> I know, I know. They're like, what is he on podcast? Gross. All yeah. right. Anyway, <laughs> take off your shirt. <laughs> yeah. We both said we could never be in a throuple. We're very insecure. I do want to point out that a lot of my friends or people I've talked to in non-monogamous relationships, they've talked about how there's a myth that like insecurity just doesn't exist. And I think that's interesting. Can you yeah, elaborate like, on that? Because I would love yeah, to tell like, my brain that same sentence. Like a lot of people I've talked to have been like, no, like, Yes, I'm in an open relationship. Insecurity and jealousy is a thing that we work through. It's not just it doesn't exist. It's there. And we're, we navigate it and like understand it and untangle it. Um, I think at least for me, I had this misconception that I was like, oh, everyone in an like everyone that's not in a monogamous relationship never experiences jealousy. They're very secure and not jealous at all. 
And I think that's like dehumanizing and incorrect from what I understand my friends to say about their experiences. What's your take on that? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I mean, I think, of course, we're going to assume that everyone around us is better than we are. Uh, unless we're self-centered losers. Uh, and I think Wait, there's a what? medium ground what? between that. It's not right. self-centered loser to think that everyone isn't better than you. The, the, fair. the other, no, you're wrong to think that everyone is better than you, but you are also appealing to the incorrect extreme if you walk around thinking that you're better than everyone else. Absolutely. I think the yeah. ideal situation is, um, I'm not better than you. You're not better than me. We're both incredibly hot. And that's a perfect triangle. Hell yeah. Okay. <laughs> I have another question for you, and I want to know your take on this. Uh, I hope it's not about ethnic people, because I have dug so many graves today. No, I really do. No, baby, you're good. Oh, you're you're really like naked mole color. ratting. I'd love to. I'd love to answer your question. I'm so ready yes. and willing, and my heart is also open and ready. So one thing I've heard a lot from my friends who are like, when I ask them about what makes them happy or like what appeals to them when it comes to non-monogamy, they're like, well, how can one person fulfill all your needs? And I'm like, I don't think any number of people could fulfill on your needs. And I think a big part of monogamy that I really love is like navigating and adjusting and finding ways to like grow it so that we can fit together better. Like that's so beautiful and intimate to me. Now, my question for you, Kevin, is do you think a, it's even possible to find someone who completes you? I don't believe that that's really a thing. To no. Be well, first of all, why do you need someone to complete you? Like what's missing from your life and why can't you supply that yourself? Like what, what about you needs to be completed? Is that's that, mm-hmm. that, that phrase has always made me like, it's always been a weird way to phrase things. And I get the sentiment sure. where it's like, we as a pair are better together. But again, it's like, mm-hmm. he completes me. It's like, okay. And then he, if he leaves, what? what happens um so that but also i'm like i just struggle with the idea of like what is a necessary relationship and what's a good friendship like where is the line drawn between like this is my boyfriend and this is my best friend and this is my very good friend and this is my friend that i probably could be in a relationship with but aren't but if we were it would probably work out like like what at at the end of the day like if a thruple works that's great what's the difference between a thruple and like three best friends and also what's the difference between a a couple and like two really good like where does friendship end Mm. and relationship begin because i know a lot of friends who would also be like they fucking complete me they are my other half they are my best Like they are my person at my side. And I'm like, that sounds like a relationship. I think an active commitment and acknowledgement that they're fulfilling the needs you want to fulfill for maybe statistically most people that involves sexual needs and emotional needs. A lot of people, maybe it doesn't. If we're still single in 10 years, should we just get married and tie the knot and get you your visa? No. Oh my God. I'm very, first of all, stop talking about, I think people like I'll get you your visa. Kevin keeps talking about how he wants to deport. I'm I'm bored of it. I'm bored of it. I'm bored of it. it. Yes. Okay. Everybody gets one. You get one per episode. You get one. Kevin is racist and terrible per episode. I'll allow it. Per episode. Uh, first of all, no, I will not marry you if I'm still single in 10 years. My <sighs> mantra is, as somebody, Point. especially right now in my life, where I'm actively like, I am not looking for a relationship in any capacity. My life is fucking amazing right now. And it's like the first time it's been amazing like this. And I'm like, the only way, fuck you. The only way you can enter <laughs> I'm it. sorry, I was laughing. I, I, there's just so, I'm, I'm do, I'm, I didn't make any jokes, but it's too, you, you tee me up for these things. You de- <laughs> You tee me up for these jokes and then you make that face and I'm supposed to just stay silent. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Oh, go on about your perfect life life right now. Really, really, really. It's not perfect. It's just (laughs) better than it has been in a long time. Um, and it's really great. And I'm like, I will only be in a relationship if the guy can actually make it better. But if not, yeah. I'm like super happy. And that's what I want. So if in 10 years, we're both single, I'm like, I guess I'll marry Kevin out of obligation. I hate that for both of us. Well, the tax benefits. No, it's not worth it. That makes our life better. You will not meet less Kevin, taxes. You will not meet. That's great. Okay, hold up. Also, you if will we not live together, there's so much less in rent. A house you is so not, much cheaper when you split ra- it with another person. I would rather pay more than I've dated somebody who was emotionally unable okay, to meet my needs and I wanted years, to die. And you don't think that no. same way? Kevin, I also won't meet your needs. Don't even frame it like, I'm not even going to frame it like, oh, you want me my needs? Less taxes I are my needs, baby. Less, I'm, I'm looking to save money here. Why are, you not, why are you ignoring my very good and valid point? <laughs> also, I hear you've got a great accountant, so... Uh... <laughs> Can I say something off the pod, off the record right now? It's really No, funny. it's going to stay in. Go ahead. Okay, well, Kevin, stop. I saw that someone commented, oh my god, they should date. Someone else just commented, they're both bottoms. <laughs> <laughs> 
I, I mean, I hate it. I hate it when people assume I'm a bottom. It makes an ass out of you and me, which we're not because we're not both bottoms. <laughs> good for them. No comment. Listen, it's good engagement, and I say, yeah, I salute you. There are so many people on dating apps, especially queer dating apps, who like attack people in open relationships for being on there. And I'm like, you do not hold a monopoly over this dating app. Like, I'm a monogamous person. I'm not getting angry because non-monogamous people are on there. Like, why are you being rude to them? They're doing their thing. You do yours. Stop being so weird and bitter. I hate it. Like, why are they yeah. getting angry? That's so weird. It's like, it's like, like you know that... what it's like? No, I'm not done. It's like going to a um, Vietnamese restaurant and being like, I want pho. Oh, why is there uh, banh mi here? Why is there banh mi? I wanted pho. It's like, okay, but someone else wants banh mi. This is not about you. How self-centered of you. Yeah, That's all. I, I do. I may, I'm, I may be reaching here, but it may come from this mentality of like, the world is your oyster. And then realizing that not all opportunities are available to you anymore. You know, it's like seeing yeah, something but... they want and then told they can't have it exclusively. How entitled do you have to be to Oh, I'm not saying that. It's I'm valid. Like, do you not have enough lived ex- No, I know I agree with you and I know that you empathize with what I'm saying. It's just like what are your lived experiences that like you don't realize that like life is a fucking shit show and you will not choose anything and the cards will be stacked against you. I just realized it's probably muscular white men. <laughs> it's hard to take yeah. any opinions on like dating apps seriously because i just imagine them like lying on their back with their dick out typing with one thumb ferociously i'm like i don't know how to take this image seriously so i guess yeah, I yeah like go off you know do your whatever whatever gets you to completion faster diva <laughs> by sure. all means have okay. fun i mean when people complain about other people's relationships which is not what we've been doing this whole time we've been doing it with much more <laughs> nuance we acknowledge that it's grace. rooted in our mental illness yes exactly <laughs> i we guess acknowledge the thing, that when someone has a problem with something else how do you not see that as a problem with you first it's like yeah. i over here can establish it's like i'm the problem right now let me complain for a sec and like i just see when people are like uh that's gross that's stupid i'm like how do you not like identify yourself as the the odd one out first or if you do like, why are you still motivated to say this out loud? Like, why are you making everyone else the problem? Instead of you. Yeah. Who can't shut yeah. up. I feel like mm. that's a, a really, really dangerous line to walk personally because now I'm just going to get this exact clip thrown in my face the moment I make a TikTok that's, like, slightly too opinionated. But, yeah. yeah. Hey, it means they're watching. It means they're watching. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. So, now that we've we've kind of danced around the entire subject what would be your green and red flags for the top like for a thruple itself i think a green flag in a thruple is being able to see them be intimate with someone else and not be like so actively hurt by it that it occupies too much of your time and being able to be like that's nice those are my like that's chill that's it i think that's a green flag What's a green flag for you in a thruple? Oof. You know what? Okay. If I was in a thruple, I would want everyone to have their own separate bedroom. Like everyone, mm. I think, I think everyone being a, a able to go to a separate bedroom, mm. that's a green flag for me, baby. Huge that's to a green have that flag. space. Oh yeah. Big green flag. Huge. <laughs> Wait, are you doing a Donald Trump impression? I'm referencing pretty woman. No, in the movie, Julia Roberts is this like whore that no thing. one respects. And then she, she goes to an establishment. And they kick her out because they don't respect her. But they don't know that she's got a credit card worth a lot. And so she goes around and shops everywhere else. And then she approaches the saleswoman who makes commission. And she shows him her bag. She's like, big mistake. Huge. Oopsies. Ugh. Okay, my red flag for a thruple is... <laughs> Oh, red flag for a thruple is the third person not knowing they're in a thruple. Like when someone cheats and they're like, oh, so you're polyamory phobic? <laughs> That's the red flag. <laughs> uh, okay. <laughs> I've heard it happen. I've heard it happen. I believe it. I believe people have said everything. <laughs> um, What's my red flag for a thruple? Honestly, my red flag, my, my red flag my for red a thruple... Thr <laughs> <laughs> I cannot stand you. I cannot stand you. My, I, I love, my favorite my favorite time to record 
No, no. My my favorite part of podcasting with you is the second we finish recording an episode, I get six whole days before I have to do this again with you. It's my favorite part. My favorite I've been part. very – tell me the truth. Have I not been very well behaved during today's episode? I've been Bro, very Every like, time I grounded. stutter, you bring it back. Every time we make a scat joke is because I stuttered. That's the only reason we joke about scat on you know this what podcast. My, you know what my ex <laughs> used to say to me when I would stutter? I'd be like, I need to interrupt me. and be like, hit it, Fergie. Every time I <laughs> – <laughs> so mean that is so mean i will be using that against other people though i am just stealing, insecure enough to be using that against others for Yo, my I'm, benefits i'm stealing it too he was the bad one so like it's one of the few good things he gave me <laughs> steal it steal it steal it okay what's your red flag give me the honestly red flag. my red flag is me being in a throuple because if i'm in a throuple <laughs> baby that ship's going down like the titanic it's not gonna last would you hide in your room and be sad and cry about it or kill someone like oh, i might i don't think those extremes are necessary um i wouldn't be sad i'm a disassociative person like i'm more likely to just check the fuck out so if i'm annoyed by something or if something's not working i just i don't put in the time or effort so i wouldn't be crying i would just be not present and then be like where is he <laughs> where did he go you know what's not a flop our podcast that you're gonna rate five stars thank you so much for listening to youtube our flop podcast. okay wait <laughs> it's not a flop podcast guys i have something to say to you and i just need you to understand it we love the support we're getting it actually really 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 helps a if you like the video if you enjoyed it on youtube specifically but if you actually subscribe oh my days like that would be beautiful and amazing like if you're watching and it's a vibe please like it please subscribe if you're watching because again it helps a lot and their views are great and we just love to like get more subscribers on there and if you could leave a review that would be great too but you don't have to but if you do maybe kevin and i will send you nipple pictures yes and also all of our comments are vetted by my dog tango he's right here look at this guy tango. look at this doggy Look at this boy. Oh, he's so cute. Aww. Can you make Tango say something? He's so cute no. and lovely. Oh, <laughs> look at that bitch. Look at his face. <laughs> so if you say anything mean, he will have to read it and maybe feel bad. So think about that before you comment. He's so cute. Someone did yeah. comment that Tango was awesome in the last video. So I'm glad. Tango is awesome. Look at him. Look at his face. The cutest. Okay. Look at that. I, would, I just, just want to like smush just, him. Just crumple him up and put him in your coffee kevin one of up. the things i'm really excited about when i finally meet you in person is meeting tango because of how like lovely tango's vibes are yeah he's he's gonna love you because i mean he'll probably just think you're me and be like treat <laughs> no i wear too many clothes he's a very stupid dog <laughs> i made a funny joke i said i wear too many clothes laugh at it <laughs> <laughs> he's like he's oh like, kevin doesn't cry when funny. other people see him shirtless <laughs> i'm gonna stop deprecating joke i said uh, tango's gonna be like oh kevin doesn't usually cry when other people see him shirtless ha 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 you know what's always fun is when people get explained the same joke to them three times people love it oh my god was that kevin's first sentence he got through during this entire episode that's incredible someone call a speech therapist and an actual I'm gonna, one i'm gonna kill you i'm gonna no you know what i'm gonna do i'm gonna convince you to join my thruple and i'm gonna murder you and you're gonna be okay with it because that's what you've always wanted go for it i Cheers. literally just annoy the shit out of you until you leave it's not gonna happen 100 percent. all right yeah okay thank you so guys. much for listening i will we will see you next time comment if Have you a, join our thruple okay Sorry. you're yelling you're yelling oh my god be nice to the Sorry. people who made it all the way here they are they're the the, the people we we like the most <laughs> let the, us know if you they join deserve the thruple. most respect and kindness because they let us know if you join this our whole thruple. thing <laughs> let us know if you join our thruple yeah let us know if you join our thruple. hey would you join our thruple <laughs> don't look at the camera like that oh god we gotta get out of here turn the shut the cameras off dead ass get the, get us out of here the cameras. <laughs> <Cut the> cameras. <laughs> bye guys bye